Hello boys and girls, I'm Madam Yap from New Dawn Enrichment Private Limited and today we're going to make Baked Alaska. Baked Alaska is a dessert, um, but we're not exactly going to make the dessert, we're using the dessert to do a, a scientific investigation. We want to check whether if air is a poor conductor of heat or a good conductor of heat. Alright, so firstly, for this dessert I need to make a meringue. So what is a meringue? A meringue is spelled M-E-R-I-N-G-U-E. -E. It is not meringue, it is meringue. So meringue is actually whipped egg white. So I take a chicken egg, I took out the yolk, separated out the yolk, and what I have here is the egg white. And to make meringue successfully, you need to make sure that there is not even a little bit of egg yolk in your egg white. And secondly, you must make sure that all your utensils are free of oil. So my bowl here is free of oil. Okay. Alright, and then I've got this whisk to whisk up the meringue. Okay. And to make the baked Alaska, I've got egg, I've got egg white, I've got sugar and cream of tartar. So this helps to stabilize the, the bubbles inside the meringue. Okay, so let's make the meringue. So before I start, okay, I think I will just whisk it first. So you can see that it is starting to get frothy. You can see it is starting to get frothy. So air is slowly being incorporated into the egg white. So when it is slightly frothy, you can you can add the cream of tartar. A little bit will do. 1 egg teaspoon to 1 egg white, 1 whole egg white. If you do not have an electric whisk, you can use just a manual whisk. Then slowly, gradually, add in about a tablespoonful of sugar. Here I'm using um, half an egg white, so I'll just use one tablespoonful of sugar. But otherwise, in the regular meringue, you can add two tablespoonfuls of sugar. So you know you have successfully made your meringue when you can put it, you can turn it over your head and nothing drops. Okay, so we have made meringue. Oh, by the way, I need to tell you, egg white, it's best to, if, if you're not going to cook it thoroughly, it's best to get pasteurized eggs to get the egg white. So in this case, for making baked Alaska, it is preferable to use pasteurized eggs. Pasteurized eggs means that the egg has been um, put in water at about 60 degrees, 
high temperature, not enough to boil it uh, to cook the egg. It's just to kill off some of the bacteria that's on the egg shells, like salmonella bacteria, which can cause food poisoning. Okay, so we are done with this one. And I need my helper to get my ice cream. Okay, we're going to make two sets of experiments because we want to check whether we want to check whether the air that is in the egg white is able to act as a as a poor conductor of heat to stop the ice cream from melting. Then, in order to do this experiment, we need to have a control. So, our our experiment is to check whether air is a poor conductor of heat. So, let's make a hypothesis. So our hypothesis is air is a poor conductor of heat and it will stop, it will help to prevent the ice cream here from melting if I were to heat it. Then in order to make sure that it is really the egg white with the air bubbles that is preventing the melting of the ice cream, I need to have a controlled experiment. So the control is egg white without, without air bubbles. But I also need to make sure that I add in the same stuff, okay, which is the cream of tartar. So everything is the same to make it a fair experiment. So for this, I'll just mix it, but not enough to create that kind of air bubbles, all right? So for baked Alaska, what you have is, you have a cake as the base, and then ice cream, and then you cover it with meringue, and then you, you bake it, or you can torch it. So here, I've got banana cake, mango ice cream, Right, so for my, for my control, I'm just going to put this egg white over the ice cream. Okay. All right, and then for this one, I'm using the whipped egg white to cover the ice cream. Can you see? Make sure it's fully covered. Next, I'll use a blowtorch. This here to touch the ice cream. So, in order for me to do a fair test, I need to make sure that my variables are constant. Okay, only one variable is changed and that is whether there's air in the egg white, okay? So, I need to make sure that when I touch the ice cream, I'm touching both at the same distance um, away from the ice cream and at the same time, I need to make sure that I'm torching both for the same amount of time. So I'll need you to count with me. Okay, so ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay. Now we do the other one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay. All right. So we're done with the experiment, and we need to now check to see which one is more melted, okay? So let's take a spoon to investigate. So over here, 
this one that is the control without the without the, where, where the egg white does not have the bubbles it is not in a meringue form we can see that the ice cream has started to melt so let's see here okay just check the surface okay so you can see that it's melting you can see the yellow of the mango ice cream now let's check the other one So I'm going to remove the, the meringue and we'll see how is the ice cream faring. Okay, so I've removed it and I can see that around the egg white, there's very little of the ice cream that has melted. Okay, so I think for this experiment, we can establish that. Okay, let's see, put this closer together, they can compare. So we can establish that air is a poor conductor of heat compared to this one. This one is a lot more has melted compared to this. This one not so much has melted. All right. Okay. So what are the applications in real life? Okay. Shall I taste it? Oh, the ice cream is still a bit hard, so I can't really taste it. But the meringue is yummy, mm. with a hint of mango ice cream. Mm. Okay. So what the, are the applications in real life? As you can see here, I have a styrofoam box. And the styrofoam box is 98% air. So it's mainly air, and you use this to keep ice cream in here. And then you cover it. So heat is, is hotter on the, in, in the surrounding than the ice cream inside. So this styrofoam with its 98% air acts as a poor conductor of heat. So heat from the, the surroundings will not be easily transferred to the ice cream. So this prevents the ice cream from melting easily. In the same way, if you were to use this to put uh, maybe some hot soup, let's say a bag of hot soup in here, and then you cover it to transport it somewhere for lunch. The, the soup, the hot soup, has got more heat, than, it's got a higher temperature than the surroundings. So the styrofoam acts as a poor conductor of heat. So the heat from the hot soup it does not go easily to the, to the surroundings, it's not lost to the surroundings so easily. So this helps to keep your food either cold or hot. All right, then I have got another example that uses air as a poor conductor of heat. So this is my winter jacket. And it's, you can see that it's a kind of fluffy. So it's very soft and fluffy. So inside has got some material that resembles some kind of fur. It's like an animal fur. So this material helps to trap air. And we know that air is a poor conductor of heat. And when we go to a cold country, we want to keep ourselves warm because the surroundings is very cold, it's at the lower temperature. So when we wear a coat like this, where we trap the air around us, so the air acts as a poor conductor of heat to prevent the heat from our body from being lost to the surroundings. So these are two examples of how we use air as a poor conductor of heat to prevent um, heat loss or heat gain. Okay, I started another experiment and for this experiment, I put the same size of ice cubes in two containers of such containers and one of them I put in another glass jar. So the, the reason I'm doing this experiment is I want to find out which ice cube melts faster and I want to see whether if the air inside this glass jar is acting as a poor conductor of heat to prevent the heat from the surroundings from entering uh, and melting the ice cube. And we are about, I think about half an hour into the experiment 
and I can see that the ice cube outside has melted okay maybe I have to I'll open up and show you the size if there's any left okay I can see just a teeny weeny bit left they started off with the same size and now this is the little bit that's left of the ice cube that was in here and the other one in the glass jar okay, let's see. it's it's not melting as fast and it's a bigger size so can you see that indeed the air in the glass jar acted as a poor conductor of heat to stop the to, to help to prevent the heat from the surroundings from entering into these bottles to melt the ice. So this is the one that's without the glass jar and this one is with the glass jar. Okay? And I just want to tell you about the application of this. Now in in Singapore, we have the National Library and the, li the library has won a platinum award for being a green building on, in one of the earlier years. So what happens is the building, you can see that the glass is actually two layers. They call it double glazed. So if you go to the National Library and you put your finger on the glass, uh, where the, the glass window is, and you can see that there's a little gap and then there's another piece of glass. So how this helps the National Library to reduce the use of electricity for cooling the place is the heat from the surroundings outside the building uh, is prevented to, from entering into, well, it doesn't prevent totally, but it helps to prevent the heat from the surroundings from entering the building. So imagine if this is the National Library it's quite cold, it's air-conditioned. This one is also cold. Yeah, it's air-conditioned. Okay, inside it's air-conditioned. And the glass, there are two layers of glass. It's like a double glaze, two layers. So that helps to prevent the heat from entering the building. Then you do not need to use as much electricity for cooling the building. So that is the application for the double glazed glass. Okay, let's turn to page 6 of your worksheets where we were investigating air as a poor conductor of heat. So we made a meringue which is egg white beaten to introduce air and then we used that to do an experiment on the baked Alaska. So a baked Alaska is actually cake with ice cream and covered with meringue and is either baked or torched. And so we found out by using a set of control and a test, we found out that the air in the meringue helped to prevent the ice cream from melting too fast. So did it help? Yes, it did. Okay, you can stop the video uh, at any time, pause the video to write your answers. So conclusion is air is a poor conductor of heat. True or false? And the answer is true. And in our second experiment, we wanted to investigate whether the air used in buildings um, does it help to prevent heat transfer. So we have green buildings such as the National Library that use double glazed glass, two layers of glass, and there's a layer of air in between to prevent heat from being trans transferred to the building. So air is a poor conductor of heat. All right, And this helps to save electricity in air conditioning. So here, this was our experimental setup. So this ice cube took a longer time to melt compared with this ice cube. So which ice cube will melt faster? The ice cube in setup A melts a slower, melts slower. Okay, so setup A has an additional, so to explain your answer, setup A has an additional layer of air around the, actually it's around the glass container. This is the additional layer of air. And air is a poor conductor of heat and prevents heat from the outside from reaching ice cube A. So if you had predicted, I actually did predict that this will melt slower, this will melt faster, and then my prediction was correct. Yes. Okay, let's take a look at some questions. So for question one on page nine, 
which of the following is or are done to prevent heat loss? When you put ice in a styrofoam container, so the styrofoam container is made up of mostly air, 98% air, and this helps to prevent heat from the surroundings from reaching the ice cube. So uh, which of the following to prevent heat loss? Yes, this one prevents heat loss. And when birds fluff up their feathers, when they do that, they are trying to trap more air in their feathers and this helps them to keep warm when they are in a very cold environment. So yes, this is it. When you wrap hot food in aluminum foil, um, well, aluminum foil is a metal, it is a good conductor of heat. So it does not help to prevent heat loss, so this is not. Okay, how about wearing a wet suit? made of foam-like material to go diving. Yes, I've, I've gone diving and I wear a wetsuit. So the, the um, wetsuit is made of a foam-like material. So it helps to trap air in between. It's um, kind of like a styrofoam. And this helps me to keep warm when I go diving in a, in a cold ocean. So this helps. So the answer is A, B and D, which is number four. Okay. How about question two? You may pause the video to try your to answer this question, and then um, check back the answer. Okay, so Helen put rods of the same shape and size, but made of different materials, into a beaker of hot water. So this is the beaker of hot water. A button is stuck on one end of each rod with melted wax. So these are the buttons that are stuck to the rods. Helen recorded the time taken for the, rod, for the buttons to fall off each rod. So, um, let's see. Time taken for buttons to fall off. For P, it took 12 seconds. Q is 20 seconds. R, 15 seconds. And S, 10 seconds. So, which rod is the poorest conductor of heat? So, if it is a very poor conductor of heat, it takes a long time for the heat to be transferred to the, to the wax to melt the wax for the button to drop off. So, which one do you think is the poorest conductor of heat? Is it the fastest to, for the button to drop off or the slowest for the button to drop off? Okay, you may want to pause the video and think about it. And once you're done, you can check back the answer. So the answer is Q. The poorest conductor of heat is Q because it took such a long time for the heat to travel up the rod to be, uh, to be transferred to the wax, to melt the wax and to drop the bu button. Right, so the answer is B. Okay, thank you for joining me for this lesson.